Oh boy, we are in for a treat. The other day, Dear Bird asked on r slash ask math, is my answer correct or inc- uh, wrong? Dear Bird has shared here what is question 16 from what appears to be a sort of primary school math packet. And the first thing you might notice is just how long-winded this problem is. But in fact, all of the essential details are right here. For completeness though, I will also read you the introduction. In a dimly lit chamber, into how few square pieces can we cut the quilt so that each piece still contains at least one patch of strategy? The quilt is seen here. He, being Astrid or Hiccup, there's no way to know, looked to the faded numbers embroidered along the border, options etched by those who fought before them. This is an in-universe multiple choice question. And there are the options. The OP Dear Bird has selected 11, but is this correct? Well, reading the problem statement closely, I can't help but get a kick out of the idea of these powerful, fantastical warriors getting ready to ride into battle, yet being so weak that they can't even carry a quilt and must resort to cutting it into pieces. Setting aside that quirk of the narrative, this problem is a heck of a word salad. But if we try to understand what's being asked here, we could quickly come up with some possible answers. First possible answer, here's the quilt. The problem says we want it in as few square pieces as possible. So then the obvious answer is just don't cut it. Leave it in one single square piece or we're done. But of course, we know that our battle-hardened fantastical warriors are sufficiently weak for this quilt's weight to be prohibitive, so we've got to cut it up somehow. And well, that's not too difficult either. We've got this 13 by 13 quilt, and if we insist that we must cut it, and we need to cut it into squares, there's still a pretty obvious solution. All we have to do is cut it in half vertically, and then do the same thing, cutting it in half horizontally. And there we go. We have successfully cut this massively heavy quilt into four square pieces. This seems like the optimal solution. However, it's not an answer choice. So what are we missing? Well, we're missing the fact that this picture has essentially nothing at all to do with the problem. This picture contains patterns, which at first I thought was relevant to the problem when I first read it. Turns out the patterns aren't relevant. You see, it says that the quilt needs to be cut so that each piece still contains at least one patch of strategy. I wasn't totally sure what that meant at first, but I thought it had something to do with the specific patterns, but it doesn't. I'm pretty sure this is just a strange way of them trying to clarify that we can only cut along the seams, so you're not supposed to cut a square into uh, partial pieces. Every patch must be left Whole. But the bigger problem is this says 13 by 13, but the pictured quilt is 10 by 10. Of course, it must not be 13 by 13, right? Otherwise, cutting it in half wouldn't even make sense since 13 is an odd number. So if we were to cut it in half, then we would actually be cutting right through some of the patches. And since the problem doesn't specify a dimension anywhere else, it's impossible to know if we should follow the 13 by 13 stated in the caption, or if we're supposed to assume it's 10 by 10, as we see in the picture. And others who got a look at this problem from Dear Bird's pack were similarly confounded. Poorly worded question, missing information and incorrect figure. Question can't be solved. I wouldn't blame anyone for just throwing their hands up when they see this. There's so much guff here that has nothing to do with the problem being asked and very, very little actually clarifying what it is to be solved. One predictable response was easy, lol, one. Don't cut it. No point banging your head against a word salad masquerading as a math problem. The OP replies, if you had read the question carefully, you should know that the 13 by 13 quilt is too large. It's, it's too heavy and you need to cut it into smaller pieces. But the commenter bites back. If you're familiar with math, you should know that the problem has to list clear conditions. This fella also goes on to mention how the problem, I think tried to say this, but it didn't. It didn't say that you can't cut cells into halves or quarters so we could cut right through the seams and still just cut it into four squares if we want to 
but I'm pretty sure they don't want us to do that. Of course, if they did, then four would be a valid option. Someone else said, I obviously don't understand the question. None of us do, since my answer would be to cut it along the seams, giving 13 by 13 169 individual squares. Of course, he missed the detail that we're trying to minimize the number of square pieces. Certainly, any quilt could be cut into the individual square patches by just cutting along all of the seams. Once he realizes this fact, he says that if we restrict ourselves to cutting only along the seams and leaving fragments that must be square, that is a more interesting problem. A more interesting problem indeed. Someone else said, Wrath of Math has to have a video on this. Well, here we are. While the discrepancy between this 13 by 13 caption and the figure being 10 by 10 makes the problem seem like a completely irredeemable mess, it's actually this 13 by 13 that clues us in to what the problem is actually trying to ask. And it's really quite surprising because the problem who's asking was attempted here in what seems like a childish and incoherent manner is really quite difficult. Compare the abstruse and verbose description of this problem to its popular origin. Yes, it's just trying to give you a new version of a classic puzzle from who else but Henry Dudney. While the puzzle actually first appeared in 1907, courtesy of Sam Lloyd, here it appears in Dudney's 1917 book, Amusements in Mathematics, and it's here where it gets its popular name, Mrs. Perkins Quilt. Yes, pictured here is the quilt belonging to Mrs. Potiphar Perkins. And you can see the problem that this math packet failed to adequately state in hundreds of words, Henry Dudney pretty clearly laid out in just a handful of sentences. It will be seen that in this case, the square patchwork quilt is built up of 169 pieces. The puzzle is to find the smallest possible number of square portions of which the quilt could be composed and show how they might be joined together. Or to put it the reverse way, divide the quilt into as few square portions as possible by merely cutting the stitches. So again, we're cutting along the seams. You can't cut a patch into fragments. So setting aside the trivial solution of cut it into one pieces, which is to just brush off the problem completely, we're simply trying to cut a 13 by 13 quilt into integer squares. They have to have integer sides because again, we are only allowed to cut along the stitches. And remember, the challenge isn't to do this in any way whatsoever, since it's trivial to cut a 13 by 13 quilt into 169 square pieces. No, of course, we're trying to cut the quilt into as few square pieces as possible. Cutting it into 169 square pieces is the worst possible solution, but we could pretty quickly find some improvements just by playing around with it. For example, we could use the cut it into fourths strategy on the 12 by 12 quilt that's contained contained in our 13 by 13 quilt. That leaves us with four square pieces on the inside and then 25 square pieces along the edges. So 29 square pieces total, which is a big improvement. Or more intelligently, we could just cut this whole giant chunk off as a single square, which again would leave 25 squares along the edges, so in total, 26 square pieces. This still isn't optimal, indeed it's not among any of the answer choices, but it's a lot better than the 169 we started with. If you play around with the problem, trying to prevent those long strips from blowing up your square count, you'll probably be able to find some decent improvements on 29. For example, here's a 14 square solution I found by just trying to avoid those trouble some long strips, but it's unlikely you're going to find the best solution because up to symmetry, there is only one optimal solution. So it's not the case that the optimal solution cuts the quilt into n squares and there are multiple ways to do this. No, ignoring symmetries of the one solution, there is only one way to get the optimal cut of this quilt into pieces. Now, if you wanna continue playing around with the puzzle, let me just give you some hints about the optimal solution before I spoil it. The optimal solution consists of 11 squares total, two one by one squares, three two by two squares, 
two 3x3 squares, two 6x6 squares, and two other squares of distinct side lengths. And this means the answer to the question, which is to find the fewest number of square pieces we can cut the quilt into, is 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Indeed, the correct answer is 11. You might think that confirms that it was supposed to be asking about 13 by 13 quilts, since the correct answer for the 13 by 13 case is here. But in fact, if it was a 10 by 10 quilt that we're cutting, the correct answer is again 11. So I'm not 100% sure which size they wanted us to consider. I would guess 13 by 13 though, since that's the size that Dudney used in the famous puzzle. All right, pause now if you don't want to see the optimal solution yet. Three, two, one, here it is. Is. Note that the numbers inside the square pieces are just counting them, so you can see that it counts up to 11 square pieces total. Later, as this problem would continue to be studied, the convention becomes to put the side length of the square inside of the square. So inside this one would say 4 because it's 4 by 4. Inside this one would say 2 because it's 2 by 2. That's just the convention these days. But when Henry Dudney published this solution in 1917, still well before the power of computers was at hand, he said there is, I believe, practically only one solution to this puzzle. The fewest separate squares must be 11. The portions must be of the sizes given, the three largest pieces must be arranged as shown, and the remaining group of eight squares may be reflected, but cannot be differently arranged. And it turns out, once we did have the power of computers, it was confirmed that Dudney was correct. This is the only solution. There's no meaningfully different way to cut a 13 by 13 quilt into 11 square pieces or fewer pieces. This particular issue settled, you may be wondering about the general problem. What is the smallest number of square pieces that an n by n quilt can be cut into? If we look at a 26 by 26 quilt, for example, we can actually just scale up our solution to the 13 by 13 case. So here where we had a six by six square, now we have a 12 by 12 square. Here where we had a seven by seven square, now we have a 14 by 14 square. Of course, it's not very interesting if I can just scale up solutions to smaller squares to get a solution to a bigger square. So in the general problem, there is an additional restriction, which is that the square pieces should not have a common factor greater than one. It's okay if some pair of squares has a common factor greater than one. For example, this is a four by four square, and this is a two by two square. Their side lengths have a common factor of two, but that's fine. What we can't have is all of the squares together having a common factor greater than one. And that rule is violated here when we just scaled up this smaller solution for a 26 by 26 square. Here, of course, since we just scaled up a previous solution by a factor of two, every single square side length has a common factor of two. That is not allowed, so this would not be considered a solution. These sorts of dissections of a square into squares that don't have common factor side lengths are sometimes called prime dissections. So with this restriction on the general problem of finding the cuts for these Mrs. Perkins quilts, each n by n square needs a unique solution. Of course, Mrs. Perkins quilt is a classic and beloved problem, but there are other variations as well, including the strictest variant, the problem of squaring the square. This problem was first studied by Zbigniew Moron. For Mrs. Perkins quilt problems, we said that the square pieces shouldn't have a common factor greater than one, but for squaring the square, the dissections are required to be so-called perfect dissections, which means that the sizes of the smaller squares all need to be different. The solution to the Mrs. Perkins quilt problem certainly was not a perfect dissection since we had several pairs of squares with the same dimensions, like this 3x3 three three square and this 3x3 three three square. When this squaring the square problem was first considered in 1925, it wasn't even known if such a dissection of any square even existed, excluding the trivial one by one case. Finally though, in 1939, Roland Sprague, perhaps best known for the Sprague-Grundy theorem of game theory, succeeded in squaring the square. 
you might like to take a moment to guess how many distinct square pieces Sprague needed and how big the whole square that he dissected was. Turns out he needed 55 square pieces to perfectly dissect a gigantic 4,205 by 4,205 square. Later though, Moron claimed that he had actually found Sprague's perfect dissection solution 10 years earlier, somewhere in this time span, but had failed to publish it. There's no proof to this claim other than his word, but he did have significant findings on this subject, so it's certainly possible. Perhaps the biggest difference between the difficult squaring the square problem and our classic Mrs. Quilt type problems is that not every size square can be perfectly dissected, but certainly every size square can be cut into a Mrs. Perkins quilt. Again, trivially, any n by n square could be cut into n squared unit square pieces. Let's bring in some notation and say that f of n is the smallest number of square pieces an n by n square can be cut into, where the square pieces, again, don't have a common factor greater than one, but we're not requiring that they're all distinct. Then, while it's obvious that f of n is no greater than n squared, the worst possible solution in each case, we actually know much more. In 1964, a legendary mathematician John Conway proved that f of n is at least log base 2n and no more than 6 times the cube root of n plus 1. I'll leave a link in the description to the paper where John Conway proved this. It's an interesting read and on the whole fairly accessible. Just as an example, when n equals 13, as in the origin of the Mrs. Perkins quilt problem, log base 2 of 13 is about 3.7 and 6 times the cube root of 13 plus 1 is about 15. And of course, we know that the true solution, f of 13, it is a 11, and of course 11 does satisfy the inequality. So there you go, a pretty ridiculous word salad math problem that happens to be an unusually difficult instance of a classic combinatorics puzzle. Phew, so anyways, with the battle quilt carefully divided and the riders rallying across the frozen landscape, hope began to kindle within the sanctuary. I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep the cable cut and untucked the table If Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal I Wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded Hate the odds that I calculated Press and pull and pray and push it all the way through the whole blue planet faded Psychosomatic habits, why you're so, so